I'm Beth Hawkins. I'm a senior writer with the 74 million, and I'm also the chair of a charter school board. My younger child's grade six to 12 school venture academy in Minneapolis is 96% impoverished, serves 350 students who have pretty profound challenges in the main. We're supposed to be graduating our founding class this year, which makes this a critical juncture for our 48 seniors and the plans that they've been busy making for the future. To find out what we're doing in this particular moment, I decided to talk to B.G. Tucker, who's the Director of College Counseling at Venture Academy. Joining us was Emily Owens, the Associate Director of College Counseling and Alumni Support, who this year is acting as a counselor to our 11th graders and next year is moving into the role of Persistence Counselor. Ms. Tucker, can you tell us a little bit about your job and the students you serve? So with these kiddos this year, they've been in a senior seminar class with me and with Emily, um, which is basically just a spot in their day twice a week, 90 minutes twice a week, where they get to commit to applying to college and every single aspect of what that means. Our big push this year, right now, where we're at right now, was to be able to get every parent in before May 1st to sign off on their kid's decision. Um, obviously, with schools being closed, that's starting to look very different. Ms. Owens? Before we move on to talk about the new normal, can you tell us a little bit about what a persistence counselor is and what your job entails? A lot of the times we have students who um, are first generation. Not only um, do we provide support for the students as they are applying to colleges and institutions, but beyond in the sense that um, that process and, and figuring things out doesn't end. You two were working with a number of students who had been accepted into colleges and who had gotten really generous financial aid packages in some instances when this crisis hit. What's changed? How are you helping them think through their options in a chaotic moment? Even if a student had been accepted, a lot of our kids hadn't gotten financial aid offers yet. Normally what that looks like is you spend the majority of April calling financial aid offices and having students call and trying to figure out like, what do you need from me in order to get a financial aid package? And that's very easy to do when you have access to students in a classroom setting for 90 minutes, two times a week. Uh, it becomes a lot harder when they are not in front of you on a daily basis or they can't come to your office or anything like that. We're in a place right now where we're trying to reassure students and also simultaneously move through this process, which is incredibly rigorous and deadline driven, while there's still so many unknowns out there, especially with so many admissions offices and financial aid offices being closed right now. Like, not only is high school trying to figure this out, but also higher ed is trying to figure this out. You two are FaceTiming into some people's homes during a pretty precarious moment. How does that feel? And I think showing them that we are, are willing to do it again, at different times of the day, we're willing to do it um, in our home environments that we maybe also might not be as comfortable showing. I know I have two other adults in um, the vicinity doing work from home right now. And so again, I've had conversations with students of, you know what, I'm trying to make the most of the situation and, and here's a painting I, I have on my wall or how's your day going? Having those conversations, I think, and, and being vulnerable with them back also adds to it and, and makes it less stressful, less scary, because it is unknown times right now, and we're all just trying to do the best we can, and so any way we can make it at least a positive experience. Do you have students asking whether there's going to be college in the fall? I've had a lot of seniors who are sort of like, well, am I even going to go? Um, because they don't know if college is going to be open or not yet. I saw on social media somebody saying that we're going to look back on this as the gap year generation. I hope not. Mm -hmm. I, I really hope that it doesn't, I mean, Emily, I'm sure you have a lot to say about that. Yes. <laughs> yep. um, especially for the students who we serve, that would be really, really hard. I don't know, Emily, do you want to talk to like what a gap year looks like and what the realities of that would be? We've seen that students who take a gap year usually do not go back to school. Um, and so we found it's really challenging for, for students, in particular students that um, I've worked with in the past where they maybe have additional family responsibilities, um, you know, helping pay for rent or helping with childcare responsibilities. Sometimes if they stay home instead of enrolling right away, those responsibilities get added to they're seen as this adult figure now in the home. Um, and it can be a lot of stress and pressure. So to then think about going back to school 
it just becomes an added barrier. We have a crew of students who are really sort of the, the top 10% of the class and they've, they've completed a really rigor- rigorous application process um, to very selective colleges. A lot of those schools are very far away from Minnesota. Um, and so it's hard for kids to wrap their heads around potentially going and enrolling at a school where they haven't had an opportunity to get on campus. Um, and the majority of these schools would traditionally offer free fl- fle- free fly-in programs for these students. Um, so they would get them out there for free, potentially, um, and have them stay overnight on campus. And so how are we sort of directing students to resources? What's it like to work with colleges during a pandemic? What are you hearing from them? Colleges have really adapted quickly and have made themselves available with virtual visits um, and phone call sessions things like that, which has just, in some cases, made the whole process more accessible for our students. Yeah. Um, students who might not normally have um, reliable transportation or be able to miss school now have time to do some of those chats and conversations that they would maybe push off till closer to graduation or closer to the deadline, which usually puts them at a disadvantage because if they're depositing or committing later, um, they maybe get impacted by when they are allowed to do class registrations or being able to pick what dormitory they're in. So this is having some positive, I think, effects on the higher education world and making offices and universities. Think about it. Yes. Um, Higher ed sometimes is a little slower (laughs) at adopting um, new technologies. And I think a lot of offices have kind of been forced into it. And again, seem to be doing really well with it. And again, sharing resources. I know people were sharing Zoom trainings and um, different ways that you could be messaging students. Uh, So again, just it's really great to see these new opportunities be available. You guys are great. Thank you for making this happen this afternoon. I really appreciate it.